Good morning. We're so glad you could join us on this negative three degree day. Uh, please stand and we're going to sing. a little bit, a little bit. I know it's chilly in here. Thank you for being with us this morning. We're uh, so happy to see you. Glad you all got here safe and welcome to those watching online today as well. We're glad that you're with us. Uh, we pray that you would just dive in with us and uh, enjoy this time uh, to worship the Lord together. Uh, I do want to let you know about a few announcements and we're, we'll receive the morning offering now as well. Uh, the ushers are ready, so let me go ahead and pray for our offering. Lord God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we come before you with thankful hearts. Lord, we come before you uh, with chilly hearts, and we ask that, that you would be at work in us today, that you would uh, warm up our spirits so that, you would, um, that we would draw closer to you. Uh, hold us close, draw us in, open our ears, open our hearts. Let us become your sons and daughters. Let us be brothers and sisters to one another. Lord, I pray that you would be at work in Anchor Church, in each one of us, in each one watching online, and help us to be more and more like Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask this in your holy name. Amen. Ushers, you can come forward for the offering, 
And uh, while the plates are going around, let me just highlight a few things. Uh, most of you uh, should have got a handout about uh, a lot of small groups we want to get started. We're trying to uh, dive in and get things happening uh, for our small groups, giving you different ways to plug in and learn. Uh, we'll be giving you more information on that at the end of service today. Uh, we do have men's breakfast. Men's breakfast will be on Saturday. Uh, that's just six days from now on Saturday morning. Guys, we'd love to have you come and join us. We'll enjoy some good food together, uh, good fellowship, and a good Bible study as well. That'll be at 8 o'clock this Saturday. Women's night out was scheduled for tomorrow, but that's been pushed back a week. Uh, instead of tomorrow, that'll be on the 22nd. We just pushed it back one week, uh, hoping for some better weather um, so that it's not quite so chilly when the, when the ladies get together here at Anchor. And uh, we will have our uh, different Bible studies and classes happening next Sunday morning as well, our early morning classes. All right, at this time, let's stand again together and, and uh, worship, worship together. Thanks. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We've all run to things we know just ain't right. And there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way. Freedom, a savior, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker.
you receive it, you can't feel it. Somebody testify, testify. You believe it, you receive it, you can't feel it. Somebody testify, you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, a saving. He's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. Oh, if you need freedom, a saving. He's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. You may be seated. Thank you, worship team. We appreciate you getting us warmed up. Uh, today we're going to be looking at John chapter 1. Uh, so if you've got your Bibles, you can go ahead and just uh, put your finger there at John chapter 1. That's the Gospel of John. We're starting a new series today called Contact. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about that. Uh, there was a chief scientist at NASA a few years ago. He predicted that in the next decade, we will have evidence of life on other planets. In fact, they found a few planets that are quite similar to Earth, one that is relatively nearby, actually quite close in cosmic terms, just 1,400 light years away. It's a real candidate. One problem is, is that with our current technology, it would take about 20 million years to travel there, even to this relatively close place, this relatively close planet. So even if we discover life there, I don't think they're going to be setting up shuttle service uh, or an exchange student program anytime soon. But it's fascinating to think about, right? First contact with other life, first contact with other life forms. It's, it's made some great, incredible movies for us, right? If you're old enough, you remember Close Encounters of the Third Kind or Cocoon. You know, lately there's been movies like Contact and Arrival. Some of my favorites were Aliens back in the day, right? That was a great action movie. Signs, Independence Day. All of them are fun and fascinating to watch. I mean, it's, it's fascinating to imagine. What would that be like? What would it be like making contact, contacting life beyond our solar system? Can you imagine how, how our world would change? It would change forever if we were to discover that we were not alone in this universe. Well, the fact is, we're not alone, right? We already know that we're not alone. There's a, another kind of close encounter that has potential to change our lives in an even greater way, if you can imagine, than making contact with aliens. Since it's a church service and not a Star Trek convention, you probably know where I'm headed here, right? I'm talking about making contact, life-changing contact with the one, with the creator, with our God, who is the source of all life, wherever it is found. So as we launch into 2024, hopefully you've gotten a little used to saying that by now, 2024, I know that there are many of you who want this year to be better. You want this year to be different. You want to set aside what you can from last year or maybe from the last many years of struggle. And you want this year to be different. And the greatest way that can happen is for this to be the year that you make contact with God like never before. Are you ready for that? Are you ready to, to amp up your spiritual life to warp speed and, and find that contact? That's why we're calling this new series Contact. For the next few weeks, we're going to look at some of these foundational things, foundational areas uh, of our beliefs that will help us experience this, that will help us build that life-changing connection with God. 
I want this to be the year, the year that we make contact with our loving and merciful and all-knowing, all-giving, all-forgiving, all-powerful God of the universe. We are not alone. We are not alone on this planet or on any other one, right? There is a God, and he is good. He loves you. He wants you to know him, and he wants you to love him. He wants you to walk in fellowship with him. So that's my prayer for Anchor this year, that we will build that connection, that we will find new and powerful ways to make contact with our Lord and Savior, a greater, more powerful, more personal connection. This series is going to help us lay the basics, lay the the foundation for having that contact. We're going to talk about our relationship with the Heavenly Father, with Jesus the Son, with the Holy Spirit, and about how to maintain these powerful relationships, these life-changing, life-giving relationships. And today is step one, knowing Jesus Christ. That is step one for us as believers. For me, that was the year 1988. That was the pivotal year for me. I had spent my whole life doing whatever I wanted. And in 88, after much prayer and much thinking and much debating, did I really want to stop the life that I had been living? Was Christ and his promises really true for me? Well, 88 was the year that all changed. It was the year that he broke through, that he changed my heart, that I offered my life to him. And now I've been following Christ. For all this time, for decades, I've read the Gospels countless times, it seems like, right? I've I've certainly heard countless sermons over and over again, right? I know all the stories. I know the events of his life, the miracles, the teachings. But I know that there's still more for me to learn. I know that I can still focus in on him more, that I can still fix my eyes on him. And find more, discover more. There's always more to discover about our Lord. I believe in Him. I love Him. I serve Him. I have for decades. But I still wrestle. I still wrestle with sin and struggle with my own shortcomings. I know I have so much more to learn. I know my connection could be greater and greater. So anchor in this year. 2024, let's decide, each of us, to know him like we never have, to know him greater than we ever have. Let's invite him to be not just a part of our lives, but to be our lives, the one who we chase after. The Apostle John writes this in verse 10 of chapter 1. It says, he came into the very world he created. He's John is describing Jesus here. He came into the very world he created, but the world did not recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. We don't want to make the same mistake. We don't want to be the ones that miss out. We want to not only recognize Jesus, but to believe him, to accept him, to allow him to change us from the inside out. And John writes in verse 12, but to all who believed in him, who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. Oh, I pray that's you. I pray that's the desire of your heart. Let's let's close our eyes right now. Lord, Lord Almighty, help us to fix our eyes on you. Be the center of all that we are. Change us from the inside out. And Lord, let us grow in our connection and our relationship and our friendship in our service of you so that we can become your true children. Change us today, this year, and always. Amen. Let's take a closer look at what John says about Jesus. John chapter 1, it's an incredible ver- uh, chapter. I could, could spend a long time just preaching to you about John chapter 1, but I'm going to try to sum up some of the major points today. 
I just want to look specifically at how it helps us make contact and, and know Jesus better this year. What does the John chapter 1 have to say to us? And there's three characteristics of Jesus I want to point out to you today. Number one is this. He is the eternal God. The eternal God. This is how verse 1 starts out. As John talks about his friend, his dear close friend Jesus. This is how he describes him. He calls him the Word. He says, in the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word, that's Jesus. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Right off the bat, sentence number one, John lays it on. He lets us know just who we're dealing with. This is God Almighty. Jesus is the Word. Jesus is God. Jesus existed in heaven before he came to earth. In fact, when we say God created the heavens and the earth, that should sound familiar to you. John and the rest of the New Testament gets much more specific. The Bible tells us that it was Jesus who created the heavens and the earth. Look at verse 3. God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. All of creation comes through Christ. In Colossians, Paul furthers this thought. Paul says this, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. Christ came here, became flesh, right? Our God, Emmanuel. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything. God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else, and he, Jesus, holds all creation together. Isn't that incredible? Do you understand Jesus this way? That he's not just a man walking those dusty streets of Israel. He is God himself. The book of Hebrews also states this, that Jesus, the Son, radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God, and he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. Jesus is more than a man. He's more than just a good teacher. He is the eternal God. He existed before his birth in Bethlehem. I know we all know that story. We just talked about it last month, right? He existed before that. He lives after that. He, he, he existed before his birth in Bethlehem. He lives after his death at Calvary. He's more than just a man. He is both man and God fully. Christians believe that God is a trinity. And I know that this is a tough concept. We believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, all three equal, and all three together as one singular triune God, one God. Jesus existed from the beginning. He was not created. He was not created. This is a, a, a myth, a falsehood that... Some other religions will teach he was not created. He is the creator. He has always been. That's what it means to be eternal. He has no beginning and no end. Always along with the Father and the Holy Spirit. When we hear the words of Jesus, we're not just hearing from a good teacher. We're not just hearing from a wise man, good things. We are hearing from God himself. Jesus' words are the words of God. Buddha was a good man, an enlightened man, but he was only a man. Muhammad, Confucius, Joseph Smith, they were all only men. Jesus is God. Amen? He made that claim. 
If you're going to believe in Jesus, you better believe when he told us this. And he proved that claim because when the powers that be, when the Romans put him to death, he came back to life. He conquered the grave. He was dead, and then he was alive. No other religious leader has done that. No other religious leader could do that. Jesus could do that because he is God. Here's the second thing that John wants us to know. Right off the bat in chapter 1, John wants us to know this about Jesus. He is the light of the world. We see this a few places, but let me highlight verse 9 for you. Verse 9 says, The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He's already here. He's already existed. He is eternal. And now this light is coming into the world. What does it mean for Jesus to be the true light that gives light to everyone, to every man? It means, in part, that he was the greatest teacher that has ever lived. That he brought truth and hope to the whole world. He lights up the true path for mankind to follow. If we were to somehow compile all the wisdom of the ages, the wisdom of the whole world into one book, all the greatest teachings of all the greatest teachers, the teachings of Jesus Christ would dominate that book. It would be the key central part of the contents because he was simply the greatest teacher that the world has ever known. His lessons, his parables, his teaching on ethics, ethics and spirituality and morality and how to live. They've shaped the way that the world thinks ever since he was here. Gandhi, who was not a Christian, but who also patterned his life on the teachings of Jesus, specifically what he learned of Jesus from the Sermon on the Mount. And Gandhi used the teachings of Jesus for his nonviolent approach to help India gain freedom from, from British oppression. In the movie Gandhi, I know it's long and, and it's a little dated now, but it's, it's a great, great story. There's a scene where Gandhi is walking down the street with an Anglican priest, and they're about to go face an angry mob of people. And the priest wants to get out of there. The, the priest wants to, you know, run. And, and Gandhi stops him and he says, wait a minute. Didn't Jesus say that we should not resist an evil person? And, and the priest's response is something along the lines of, well, hey, you know, I, I think Jesus was probably talking figuratively there or, you know, that was a, a story. Isn't it convenient for the priest to believe that with the angry mob? just down the street, but not Gandhi. Gandhi took Jesus seriously. Gandhi understood the power of the teachings of Christ. One time he said this. Gandhi said, you Christians have in your keeping a document with enough dynamite in it to blow the whole of civilization to bits. To, to turn society upside down, to bring peace to this entire war-torn world. But you read it as if it was just good literature. You read it as if it was just literature and nothing else. Even non-believers can see the power of his teaching. One of the biggest ways that he spread his light, his hope, his truth here on earth is through that teaching. And thank God that we still have that teaching today. You can see it. You, you probably have it in your hands. I'm sure that you have it at home. It's super easy to download on your phone. The truth and the teachings and the light of Christ is available to all of us. But how often do we take advantage? How often do we open it up? Here's some examples from the Bible about his teachings. In John 7, there's a story of the, the Pharisees who were always set against Jesus, right? They were always in disagreements and arguments. And now the Pharisees have gotten upset enough that they want to arrest Jesus. So they send their guards, the temple guards, out to arrest him. But when the guards get there, instead of arresting Jesus, they're stopped 
And, and they start to listen. And they listen. And they return back to the Pharisees. And the Pharisees say, where's Jesus? Why didn't you arrest him? And they answer, we have never heard anyone speak like this. We've never heard anyone speak like this Jesus. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus visited the town of Capernaum and he began teaching at the temple. And Luke says that there too, the people were amazed at his teaching. He spoke with authority. And these, these simple, short sentences in the Gospels, it's easy to just gloss them over sometimes. But look at these words. They were amazed. He spoke with authority. Jesus and the truth he taught, they are the light of the world. They brought light into this world. About his own teaching, Jesus said this, The very words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. And in John 8, he says this, I tell you the truth, anyone who obeys my teaching will never die. Hey, that's got some power, huh? Anyone who obeys my teaching will never die. Jesus' words bring light and hope and truth. Everything we need to know about knowing God, we can learn from Jesus. There is nothing that anyone can add to his teachings to make them better. They're perfect. Who could improve on a statement like, do to others as you would like them to do to you? It's incredible. Incredible in its simplicity. Incredible in its power, in its truth. How can you improve on the power and the simplicity of the Lord's Prayer? How can you improve on the teaching found in the Sermon on the Mount? It's incredible. As, as a pastor, it's not my job to try to enhance or improve the teachings of Jesus. Thank the Lord. It's just my job to teach it and to help you learn how to apply it, how to live it out in your life. Pastors don't need something new to say. We simply need to help people live out what Jesus has already said. Amen? Church, are you ready for something different this year? I hope you are. Here's the third characteristic of Jesus that we learn from John chapter 1. This is all in chapter 1. This is thick, thick chapter. It's number 3. Number 3 is this. He is full of unfailing love and faithfulness. Now, if you've read the NIV for years like I have, you might know this verse as he is full of grace and truth, truth and grace. But I love the way the NLT translates this, unfailing love and faithfulness. In chapter 1, verse 14, it says this, so the word became human and made his home among us. Again, this is Jesus. See the capital W. That's the person of Jesus. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And John uses that again in verse 17 where he says, For the law was given through Moses, but God's unfailing love and faithfulness came through Jesus. Many religions, Many ideas, many philosophies, they, they teach a message full of laws and rules. Many religions teach of an angry God who's ready to cast judgment uh, down upon unruly people. Religions that are all law and no love. Now, I'm not saying that there won't be a judgment. There will be a day that judgment comes. And there will be a day when all of us, every human being, stands before the throne of God. And where we are asked to give an account of our deeds. But as believers in Jesus Christ, as believers, we will not face this judgment alone. We will face judgment with Christ at our side. We will face judgment covered in the perfection of Christ. We will face judgment covered in his righteousness in his covering, his forgiveness, his cleansing of our sins, because Christ was perfectly faithful to the law. Christ is the one who is perfect. Verse 17 again, For the law was given through Moses, talking about the Old Testament law, but God's unfailing love and faithfulness came through Jesus. His faithfulness paid our price. 
His faithfulness to the truth paid for our sins. Jesus showed His unfailing, unstoppable, unchangeable love for us by dying on the cross. The Word became human, became flesh and blood. He came to earth to save us from our sins. He came to save us. John the Baptist Chapter 1, verse 29, John the Baptist sees Jesus coming to him, and he tells the people, he shouts, you can just hear John shouting, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. John the Baptist knew why Christ was there. Jesus didn't come to earth 2,000 years ago to just teach, to just enlighten us. He knew that we would need more than great teaching. Oh, his teaching is great, isn't it? Say amen. Amen. His teaching is great. Do you need more than that? Yes, you do. (laughs) Yes, you do. Because sin has broken us. Sin puts us on uh, on the wrong path, on a dark path. He knows that we need more than just his great teaching. We need to be saved. We need to be saved. St. Jerome. He was a a church father centuries ago. He translated early Greek manuscripts into Latin so that the people could understand. And he chose to live in Bethlehem. He wanted to be as close as possible to Jesus. He lived in Bethlehem because he wanted to be where Jesus was born. He wanted to see and know and feel the things that Jesus felt. And St. Jerome, one night he had a dream that Jesus visited him. And in this dream, Jerome, he He hurries around and he finds all of his money and he lays it at the feet of Jesus. And Jesus looks at him and says, I do not want your money. And so Jerome, he he rushes around his home and he, he gathers up all his possessions, everything that he can find, and he lays them at the feet of Jesus. And Jesus says, I do not want your possessions. And Jerome looked Jesus in the face and he said, then what can I give you, my Lord? Jesus said, give me your sin. Give me your sin. That's what I came for. I came to take away your sin. Even the most faithful believers, even the best people you know, we have a problem that must be addressed. The problem of our sin. Our sin creates a gap between us and our holy God. Jesus Christ came into the world to bridge that gap. That's why he came. He even told us that this was his mission. Luke 19, Jesus says this, For the Son of Man came to seek and save what was lost. He's talking about us. He's talking about me. Amen. Jesus is full of unfailing love and faithfulness. His death on the cross provides the the payment, the purification for all our sins. And friends, through the power and the sacrifice of Jesus, your sins can be removed forever. They can be washed away. They can be removed as far as the east is from the west. Your guilt can be removed, and you can live in beautiful, life-changing contact with our holy God. That's what he offers to you. John 3.16 For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. We believe. Help us to believe more. Help us when we don't believe. Jesus, let us believe more and more in you. We know that you are not just a good teacher because a good teacher could not forgive our sins. A good teacher could not wash our souls and our spirits and our hearts and our minds clean. He could not renew us. And a good teacher could not have conquered the grave by coming back through his resurrection. But Jesus has. Jesus is the one. And now we are freely offered the gift of God, 
which is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Throughout history, many have come, many have tried to teach the right way. Throughout history, many have come and and tried to lead, lead people into the right way. But Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Our Lord and our Savior came into this world full of unfailing love and faithfulness to save us from our sins. He is faithful. His love does not fail. He wants you. He knows you. He loves you. He gave his life for you. And he wants you to walk in faithful connection with him. Will this be the year? Will this be the time? John begins his gospel in chapter 1 by reminding us that Jesus is our eternal Savior. He is the light of the world and that he's full of unfailing love and faithfulness. If we want to be spiritually alive, we need to know him personally, one-on-one, to trust him, to talk to him, to walk with him. That's where contact begins. It's this personal, even intimate, honest relationship with Jesus. It's never playing a game. It's never pretending. It's personal and intimate, and honest. If you want this to be the year that you make contact with the eternal God, it starts here. It starts with Christ. Make him the center of your spiritual life. He's not just the name we say at the end of our prayers because we want to be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. When, uh, When so many of us aren't even sure what that means. He's more. He's God. He's the one who came. He's the one who saves. Make this the year that you make contact. Get to know Jesus by learning all that you can about him and by spending time with him every day. Make contact. Get to know Jesus by learning all that you can about him and by spending time with him every day. Now, I know you're not done on your outlines yet, all right? And it feels like we've wrapped up, but I got, I got a little tagline for you. I got a little post log for you. Uh, I want to give you three or, or four or five ways, uh, suggestions about how to do this. How can you draw near? How can you jump in? The first one is simple. You should know this. You read the Gospels. <laughs> you read the Gospels. You dive in there. You get to know Christ. You read all four Gospels every week. That's a lot, isn't it? How about you read a chapter a day? That sounds like something you could do, doesn't it? You know, if you focus in on the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you read just one chapter each day, you'll get all the way through all four Gospels four times in a year. I challenge some of you to do that. Strive to encounter Jesus by knowing his word, by knowing him in a personal way. The second idea is this. Watch some inspiring media. It's cold outside, people. (laughs) It's freezing out there. There's not a whole lot you can do, even if you wanted to do stuff, and a lot of us are going to end up in front of the television, right? So how about tuning into something inspiring? Watch some shows about the life of Jesus. Watch The Chosen. It's great. Start with season one because it's worth watching every episode. Watch the the Bible miniseries that they put out a few years ago. And there's so many movies about Jesus as well, right? If if you're okay with the R rating, watch The Passion of the Christ and learn what you can. If you're okay with old school, watch Jesus of Nazareth and see what that was like. Some of the movies are better than others, but you'll be making intentional, encouraging choices. You'll be learning about your Savior, your King. The third is this. Read. Read a book about Jesus. 
There are biographies about Jesus. Read a book that shows his life in chronological order. Uh, a book that not only talks about what he did, but talks about the, the world and the culture he lived in that would help you uh, understand more, understand things in, in a new way. There's one called The Hidden Jesus. There's another called Jesus, A Biography from a Believer by Paul Johnson. And, and there's many more, right? There's so many. If you need help finding a good one, let me know. Fourth, do this. Download the Bible app. It's so simple. Just download the Bible app and listen to Christian podcasts. When you're not in front of the TV, chances are that phone is nearby, right? The phone is nearby. So make good use of it. Don't let this take over your life. You take over your phone. You tell your phone what you want it to do. And one of the easiest things you can tell it to do is download the Bible app. And that app will automatically feed you scripture every single day. There'll be a link to scripture. There'll be a link to a prayer that you can pray. There'll be a link to a video of someone unpacking that scripture and encouraging you. Or if you listen to podcasts, there's a lot of options there as well. Number fifth is this, commit to a group of believers. Make a commitment to do more this year. To not just come on Sundays, but to uh, spend intentional time with brothers and sisters. We've got a lot of options for you. We handed out a, a paper today to show you some of those. And there's more too, right? There's our Sunday morning groups on top of that. Put in the effort. Do the things that matter most. Don't be afraid to make these commitments. It will be worth it. This will make your year great. Connecting with Jesus in a more personal, uh, 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 real way this year, by learning all you can, by spending time with him in fellowship every day. These things will change your life. They'll change your heart. They'll change your relationship with others. And it'll change your relationship with the Lord. He wants this for you. Are you willing? Are you ready to make contact? Make contact. Amen. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. It's an incredible passage. It's filled with great theology. It's filled with encouragement. It's filled with so much information about our Lord and Savior. So maybe you want to start there for your time in Scripture. Start with John. Dive into chapter 1. See what all you can learn. See what new things the Lord wants to show you this year. All right, church, uh, we're going to spend some time in uh, sermon sequel together. Um, not too long, because I know it's chilly in here, uh, but uh, we do want to spend some time together. David, thank you. Uh, power it up right there. I think we might need to turn on the handheld mic. There it is. So I've got just a couple questions that we'll, we'll spend a little bit of time on, but then I also want to spend some time talking about the, uh, our options for small groups, our options for classes that we have um, this year as well. Oh, okay, I didn't bring my outline up, but we've got the questions right here. Uh, what characteristic of Jesus means the most to you and why? And then number two is, what are some ways that you have found that help you stay close to Jesus? So one about Jesus, one about you. Uh, what characteristic of Jesus means the most to you? Uh, since we're not going to spend a, a bunch of time here, uh, let's go ahead and, and you can chime in on either question. But I think, Ken, you got the mic yep. back there? Yep. Ken, go ahead, brother. Yeah, I would say love. Um, I'm mm -hmm. going through a Ben M book right now, finishing up on the last chapter. And they were talking about dying to yourself, about how guys were like in World War II, they were heading up to Normandy Beach and they knew they were going to get slaughtered. Mm, yeah. But they were there to protect someone else, just like Jesus did for us. Okay. You know, just die to yourself, you know, just have a passion for someone else other than you. 
And I thought that was very, very cool how they explained that, you know, just the love of Christ, how he just gave it up all for you. He didn't have to, but he did. Yeah, amen. That selfless love, right? That, that love that would give all, even, even give its own life. Yeah, yeah. Anyone else? Uh, question one or two. Uh, a characteristic of, of Jesus that means the most to you. It might be the, the three that we uh, talked about today. It could be uh, many others, too. Uh, we, we certainly didn't cover all there was to cover about Jesus today. Um, but what, what are some of those characteristics that matter to you? Yeah, David, go ahead. I think the, one of the main characteristics I like the most is the fact that he went where the poor people and the suffering were at. Hmm. You know, the, the bottom of the barrel is what most society would look at it as. That's where he found himself all the time. That's where he stayed at, in the trenches. Yeah. So, uh, Yeah, right on, brother. The highest, pers- the highest being in the whole universe, or the holiest being in the whole universe, came so low to find the lowest, raised them up high. That's amazing. Yeah, and his love, right? His love and his care uh, for, the, for the poor and the hurting and the disabled and the outcast and... and and like you said, just the lowest of the low, Christ cared and showed love to all. Yeah. Let's see, anyone else? Uh, what are some ways that you have found to help stay close to Jesus? Uh, what are what are the ways that you found that uh, it just makes sense to you, or, or maybe it's a season thing? You know, for for the last uh, couple months or the last couple years, this is the way that I've connected to Jesus. This has really meant something to me. What are those um, ways, methods, practices uh, that make sense to you that help you connect with the Lord? Felix? Sorry, that's Hillary, isn't it? That's Hillary. There you are, Hillary. (laughs) And this one here. Um, the ways I found to stay close to him is I just talk to him. When I'm in my car, I could be doing my makeup, uh, okay. get a little irritable sometimes and get frustrated, and the first person I reach out to is him. I just talk to him like he's there. It's, it's not even a prayer. It's just talking to him, asking him for strength, asking him for help in all situations. Right. So I feel like he's with me every day, all day. He's one of my closest friends. <laughs> I love that, so. Hillary. I love it. Yeah, and just in these, these little moments, right? Um, like, it, it doesn't have to be anything formal. You can be in the middle of doing something else. You can be frustrated. Um, you can just know that he's there. He's with you. He's listening. He's one of your closest friends. That's, that's beautiful. That's right on. Where are we at? Ken? I would say through song and uh, mm. reading, reading Christian art, um, authors. Okay. Um, Going through the Bible, having someone, having someone to talk to about different, different, uh, right? You know, stuff that you read through the Bible yeah. and stuff like that. It's very, very cool. Yeah, it makes a big difference when you have someone to talk to, uh, to talk it through, to ask questions to. Uh, you know, and they'll they'll ask you questions, and you've got to, you know, figure it out or say, "Man, I don't know either. Maybe we better both try to figure this out." Uh, but yeah, those are beautiful things. Worship music too, right? I mean, music is powerful, and it can draw us into the presence of God. It can can remove some of those distractions of the world and help us focus on Him. Jessica. Yeah, go ahead, <laughs> Jessica. Um, one of the things I do is when I first wake up, I thank Him for waking me up, ah, and nice. I spend a few minutes in my bed before I turn on my phone before I look at anything, before I think of all the things that I have to do for the day. (laughs) I spend time with him before I even get out of bed, and it just kind of sets the tone for the rest of the day and keeps me in connection, keeps me grounded. Right on, Jessica. That's great. And that is, uh, I I love it when that happens for me, and when that doesn't happen, like when I've woken up and I've gotten ready and I'm getting my coffee, getting ready to head out the door, and I realized I haven't done that. I haven't talked to God yet. You know, I haven't uh, thought about Scripture. I haven't checked the Bible app on my phone because I woke up late. That doesn't ever happen. Um, whew, that kind of sets the tone for my whole morning, right? 
Uh, and and the, the opposite of that, when I do have that time, when, when he is my first connection, my first conversation, um, yeah, it, it just it changes, changes my whole morning, if not my whole day. Where, Tara, where are you at? I'd say for me, it's accountability from others that I've surrounded myself with. Um, I know personally, and I don't know about everyone else, but when I start to stray or um, feel that I'm getting distant, if you've got you know some close people that you can open up to, they kind of bring you back to that path yeah. to get you back close to Jesus. And you know, fortunately, I've got some of those in my life, and that's you know, I had a week when I was really having a hard time, and a text message to a friend, and they show up at my my work and just say, nope, I need to see you. Get yourself straight. And sometimes <laughs> that is the best way to keep yourself close. Yeah, absolutely. Our brothers and sisters in Christ, yeah, who, who not only get us, but who know the Lord and, and can help, help us, point us back to that light, that hope, that truth. All right. Um, so uh, since it's like literally uh, freezing, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just wanted to highlight a few things for you. Uh, most of you got this. Uh, if you didn't get it, we might still have a few copies around. Um, there's not a rush on this. We just want you to start thinking about this. Um, Clara's book club, uh, it looks like we're going to uh, hold that back for a couple months, right? So that is not, a, that January date is not right. We're going to hold that back. Um, but hopefully most of you know Clara. Uh, that'll be a great class. Uh, I think that's a great book choice uh, for people. It'll be something that, a, a, a book that a lot of you can get a lot out of. Um, and it'll be easy to understand, easy to read. Um, and you just, you can't beat uh, spending time with Clara. So uh, keep that one in mind. Um, I, uh, I'm going to have Chris come up. Uh, and while, um, while Chris comes up uh, to talk about our sexual integrity class, I also want to tell you about uh, the Bible 101 class that I'll be teaching. Uh, I want to start a Wednesday night study. This is something we did a few years ago. Uh, I remember Bob and Becky and, and Vinny and Tracy were part of this class. Uh, but there's, we've got a ton of new faces, a ton of new people. And if you are still getting to know the scripture, uh, if you're still at the basic level of uh, what's the Old Testament, what's the New Testament, uh, all those kind of things, we're, we're going to start at the beginning uh, we're going to hit the, the biggest themes of the scripture. I'm going to help you understand uh, some of the basic differences, Old and New Testament. Uh, you know, what do we mean when we talk about the history books of the Bible? What do we mean when we talk about the poetry books in the Bible? What are the Gospels? Why do we call them the Gospels? Uh, just this basic understanding of what is this book that we um, cherish? What is this book that we hold so important? Uh, helping you understand that. Uh, and I, I, ha I, w I want this to be a 10-week class, uh, but um, competing with Easter in there, we might, we might try to cram it into eight or nine weeks. Uh, so that'll be my class. That'll be a Wednesday evening class. Uh, we'll have sign-ups for that uh, next week so we can try to uh, get a time set that, that, meets for, that works for most people. But that'll be probably 6 or 6.30 is what I'm thinking. Uh, Chris and Renee, come on up. Um, some of you have gotten the chance to get to know Chris and Renee, and some of you haven't, but they've been uh, coming to Anchor for a while now, and, and their awesome kids are here with us as well. Um, and they, uh, well, they're pretty awesome. I don't want to put words in their mouth, uh, but I've loved getting to know them. Uh, I've loved hearing uh, their story, their background, getting to know their kids. Uh, they even made me dinner one time. Uh, so I'm just excited to have Chris and Renee part of our body uh, and that they are um, looking to step in and, and lead some classes for us. Go ahead. Yeah, so the, this is a SI uh, Sexual Integrity 101 class. Um, it's a eight-week video series from Pure Desire Ministries. Um, kind of comes out of kind of our heart for um, we've seen in our own lives, just kind of and in the church in general, this isn't, you know, criticism, but oftentimes a lack of uh, resources to talk about healthy sexuality, um, sometimes even bad information mixed in with good information. Um, we talked about brokenness this morning. 
And we know that, you know, there is brokenness in the world, and a lot of us, uh, even in our own ways, have some angle, some kind of sexual brokenness in our lives that needs looked at, examined. Um, this course is basically just a, a safe way to get good information. It's not a deep dive into your own story. Uh, you can kind of investigate that on your own. It's just to come learn some good information about those, um, about ways in which maybe we've had unwanted sexual behavior in our own life. We've maybe experienced infidelity or know someone who has, um, or we've experienced the pain of that in our own life. And so this is a good way, um, whether you've experienced it in your own life or you're in a position where um, you want to be able to help someone who has, it gives you that framework um, mm. to have good information to be able to care for and, and see where they're at, um, kind of understand that position. Uh, there'll be testimonials from people who've done personal work in their lives, testimonials from Christian uh, therapists. Um, anything you would add? Yeah, I think just one thing that we've appreciated about the series is just that it is really broad for really any situation and that it can be for you know someone to, to reflect on their own life, but it can also be for people that want to minister to others. Um, or that do minister to others. So it can be for, you know, pastors or lay leaders in the church or just people that influence other people. It can be for parents, parents of preteens or teenagers or young adults um, who want to be able to give some direction there too. So it's just, it's a really good, I think, broad class. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chris and Renee. Uh, appreciate you. Um, yeah, so... I'm not going to say anything better than that. It's an eight-week class. We're going to start it in a couple weeks. Uh, it's a good program. Pure Desire has, has good resources for us to work through and talk about. Uh, and this is a topic that is it's hard to talk about. That's not going to be the primary object of this group is for you to come and, and tell your story and everything that went bad. This is going to be a learning experience. This is a great step. And... Um, it's a topic that's hard to talk about, so a lot of times we avoid it, but it's also so important. It's part of all of our lives in one way or another, and we need to not avoid it. We need to find out uh, what God would have for us. Um, Steve, I'd invite you to come up real quick as well. Um, we are, well, just in uh, five or six days, we'll be uh, kind of restarting, relaunching our men's breakfast. Um, it's a pretty straightforward group on Saturday mornings, uh, but this has been happening off and on for several years, and uh, Steve's uh, almost always been a part of that. And I just wanted you to share a few words. I think it's very important that we, you know, as men get together and be able, able to discuss things that, um, you know, sometimes you don't want your spouses or your kids around to see, and you know, now that my kids are young adults, it's, uh, you know, we, they've been to our men's breakfast several times, and it's, it's really enlightening because you can, you can vent on other guys about guy things. I mean, show up and eat some sausage and eat bacon like men, all men should do. But, uh, but, uh, but we, you know, definitely need to, to lean on each other, and it's, it's very enlightening, too, when, uh, when you've got some of the um, uh, guys that, you know, like Herb, that brings so much knowledge to our, our men's breakfast and and uh, you know, we break up at the end and have prayer and, and go through prayer requests. And you know, sometimes those are some pretty personal prayer requests that, uh, that get mentioned. And, and it's uh, something that's really touching. And you can kind of equate with some of the people. It uh, gives you something to pray for each other about throughout the week and mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, so, Steve. You're welcome. Appreciate you. Um, so I didn't give Tammy or anybody else any warning that we were going to do this today, uh, but ladies' night out, that's, uh, it's a great time of connection uh, for the ladies. I might have Tammy say something about that next Sunday uh, if she'd like to. And the final thing on the list, uh, we just want to get together and have some fun as well, uh, especially when it's freezing outside and there's not a whole lot you can do. Uh, so we're going to start uh, something called First Fridays. And on uh, every first Friday, starting the first Friday in February, 
Uh, we're going to get together for uh, a time, uh, family-friendly time, uh, spending time together, having pizza, playing a variety of games, uh, table games, whatever uh, sounds like fun that night. It's just a time to be together uh, as a church family and a time that uh, will be great uh, for our families uh, to all come together as well. So uh, keep those dates on your calendar. All right, that was a lot, uh, but I hope you're excited. And I hope you're ready to make contact with our Lord, with our Savior, with Jesus in new and powerful ways this year. Uh, music team, come on up and uh, let's close this morning uh, with some worship. the power of sin and darkness, whose love is mighty and so much stronger, the King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in all his
Hey, thanks to your body heat and singing energy, we warmed this place up to 65 degrees. All right. Woo! You can almost take your coat off. <laughs> almost. Hey, thank you so much for making the effort to be with us this morning. Uh, we love you. We appreciate you. Consider how you can jump in and plug in and just make that contact. Make this year different than other years. Make it the year that you connect with Jesus in a brand new way. Now may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ go with you. Also with you. Have a great week. Stay warm. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear.